we now know that the FBI didn't believe that Michael Flynn lied to agents during his interview about his conversations with Russia's ambassador to the United States. But the special counsel prosecuted Trump's former national security advisor for making false statements to the FBI anyway. That duplicity was revealed Friday when key redactions were removed from the House Intel report on the Russia investigation. To tell us why all this matters and what it means from New York is former federal prosecutor Andy McCarthy. Andy, uh, this is so wild. Why these redactions are being done, the justification for continuing to remove critical exculpatory information from these documents. Tell the Fox viewers what they need to understand about this tonight. Well, it was really outrageous the way this was done, Laura. It was on um, Friday night that they dumped out this the unredactions of what they had previously redacted. And what we learned when you compared uh, the two documents once, once we got the new passages shown is that what they had tried to conceal was the information that was exculpatory in nature about Flynn and the information that actually went to their decision-making process, including how they investigated Flynn, the fact that they couldn't get their story straight about what the uh, basis of uh, tr considering him to be a criminal suspect were. Uh, it's just really um, very depressing for somebody who is proud of, uh, you know, having come from the Justice Department and working there for such a long time. I mean, some of the stuff they held back was actually public information that was out already, but they didn't want to put it in in the context that, that it came up in the report because it calls into question the prosecution of Flynn. Yeah, so from the beginning, one could then surmise that the screws were turned on Flynn after he had those conversations with the Russian ambassador. I think he, he thought he was allowed to have conversations. He was the incoming national security advisor. Sally Yates rushes over to his office, the acting attorney general, brings a couple agents, including Peter Strzok, and he said, yeah, I'll, I'll answer questions. He didn't even have a lawyer present, it's my understanding. He just sat down and answered questions. Yeah, and here's why this is so bad, Laura. If you want to have, uh, they say they're pursuing a counterintelligence investigation. You got a guy like Flynn who's got a big intelligence background. He's a combat veteran of the United States actually wrote a book in 2016 that labeled Russia as an enemy of the United States, right? So if you really want to advance your intelligence knowledge and you have a recording of Flynn's conversation with the Russian ambassador, what you would do is play the recording for Flynn and ask him, what did this mean? What did that mean? So you can enhance your understanding, right? What they did instead was ask him questions about a conversation they, already they knew had about. a recording of. Yeah, they already what knew about it. What good reason is there for that other than to try to get him to trip up? Yeah, well, we'll get to Ellis's comments about how the, uh, how the Mueller investigators were, have been operating in a moment, Judge Ellis. I want to play a flashback uh, from when Jim Comey sat down with Brett Baer and what, he was asked a specific question about Mike Flynn. Let's watch. Did you tell lawmakers that FBI agents didn't believe former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn was lying intentionally to investigators? No. You did and, not And tell I them. saw that in the media. I don't know what. Maybe someone misunderstood something I said. I didn't believe that and didn't say that. Wow. What about that, Andy? Well, you know, I guess to split hairs, I guess if you were inclined to do that, what he said, and they quote him in the report, uh, is that the agents didn't detect any physical signs of somebody who was trying to, to conceal deceive something. them. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, I really, right. we're at like how many angels on the head of a pin time to try to split those hairs, right? All right. So, uh, Devin Nunez is just hot and bothered about the fact that he can't get documents or they're redacted for no, seemingly no good reason. Uh, and so he's basically threatened. Uh, Jeff Sessions, Attorney General, with contempt if this stuff doesn't start coming over to the Hill. Sessions today came out and he said, look, I'm willing to sit down with him, got his attention. Uh, the White House, apparently through Mark Short, the domestic policy advisor, said, we stand, we're supportive of our cabinet members. Uh, Joaquin Castro, the congressman from Texas, was on CNN this afternoon. Let's watch what he said. This probably wouldn't be happening unless the White House somehow gave its blessing to uh, go around and somehow punish Jeff Sessions 
through the Congress. Your experience with Devin Dunes, does he ever do anything that goes against what the White House wants? No, I think at this point, well, not at this point, for a while now, he has basically been uh, somebody who's doing the White House's bidding. I mean, I, I wanted to scream out, objection, leading. <laughs> right. I mean, from, from Blitzer, I mean, that's, a, that's an anchor asking a question. Of, Don't you think Trump's a jerk? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, come on. Your, your reaction to, that's always bashing Devin Nunez. He's the boogeyman. He's the bad guy. Uh, meanwhile, they don't go to the substance of the, uh, of the problem here. Yeah, well, it, it's remarkable that, you know, here, Nunez, I think, is actually doing the work of the people in terms of somebody having a check on what's gone on in these investigations. And it's appropriate that that be investigated. And it's just remarkable to me, right as we're looking at this report that has these redactions that are so ridiculous that even the Justice Department can't justify them. That's why they, they put them out. So you have to wonder, everything else that they're withholding, why are they withholding it? Uh, and yet they're attacking Nunez. You would think they would be attacking the people who were, you know, holding back the documents. The one fair criticism I think they make is that ultimately the president's in charge of the executive branch, and he's got to do, to my mind, he's got to do a lot more than, than tweet that he's angry that there's not enough cooperation. I think he needs to, like, start giving people orders to cooperate. Uh, and finally, Judge Ellis, Eastern District of Virginia, you know him well, I know him well, uh, no-nonsense judge, my Reagan appointee, he put this... He, he, he was pretty, uh, pretty adamant on Friday with the special counsel's office that it seems like you know, they don't really care about Manafort. They want to use Manafort to get Trump. Uh, your reaction to that back and forth, Andy Napolitano said people are kind of exaggerating the importance of what happened on Friday. Well, they may be exaggerating the importance in the sense that, I, you know, I don't think the case against Manafort is going to disappear, uh, even if, you know, the judge were to, to strike the indictment. I don't, and I don't think he's about to do that. But my main reaction, Laura, is that I'm glad that finally the questions that we've been asking for a year about the special counsel's jurisdiction, about the noncompliance of the Justice Department with the regulations in uh, choosing him, uh, uh, about the way this investigation has been conducted from soup to nuts, they've been able to ignore the peanut gallery, but this is a federal judge who's asking the same hard questions, and, and they have to deal with them. All right, everybody read Andy's great piece in National Review about this whole uh, redaction, withholding of documents mess. Andy, thanks so much.